Welcome to the Spice Squadron Podcast, episode five. Episode five. Episode no five. question mark. <laughs> it is indeed episode five. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Um, pretty interesting week we've had mm. since the the big command stream. There was no live stream this week. Because there's a big live stream next week. We've talked yes, about it a bit. We're learning booster exciting. pack ratios. I, for one, am very, very keen to see what I'm, uh, my, my grubby little mitts, how many, Absolutely. how many rares and legendaries I'm going to get. Um, but uh, in saying that, there actually has been quite a, quite a lot of spoilers. It's been a decent number for, the, for a week yeah. where, with no, I think probably because they didn't have a stream, maybe they gave out some more spoilers a bit of for... Yeah. People to give out. Uh, the first cards I think we want to cover off are uh, the for some of you diligent viewers um, and people who were caught up. The back of the starter deck bases had the deck list they showed up on stream. Uh, so we didn't get all of the cards in the starter deck stream. We're missing three cards. Yes, indeed. Uh, and we got them shown off. So we'll start by having a look at Resilient. It's a simple yet effective card. Mm. Um, which is going to be today's theme as well, just before we get into it. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be discussing uh, what makes a good card. Just using TCG experience that we've had. Yeah, numbers. kind of having a look at the general card board at the moment. Obviously, we yeah. don't know everything. So just kind of feeling out what kind of yeah. makes a good card for us and what kind of... Yeah. And, and this comes from us playing like games for a while. And maybe like looking at a card and just going, this is good. And we'll, we'll get into a bit more of that later. But first, let's discuss Resilient. Yeah, Resilient is a one-cost... Uh, upgrade that gives zero attack but three health. It is uh, it is blue as well. It's vigilant, non affiliated. That's it. Um, good card. Yeah, it's um, especially in blue where there's a lot of healing. Um, I'm, immediately my mind goes to Chewy with yeah. grit. Um, putting it on him makes him a two twelve. Yeah. Um, with grit, which. Adding health to a grit unit is, is already good, good because you're adding power. Yeah, I think this card is a, this card's fine. I think oh, it's interesting to see a one cost upgrade. I all I really like seeing more upgrades in this game. Um, I don't think it's game breaking, but I think that for the decks that you are going to run this card in, it's value. Putting yes. it in Chewy to give it grit. Put this on your rugged survivors. We talked about that card and how it's underrated last game. Uh, last video, sorry. Put put this on your rugged survivors. Yeah, this on rugged survivor makes them a three eight, you, which yeah. really makes them so much e like easier to use and to yeah. stick around, especially for a draw whenever the you, meter comes you up. Go, you're either gonna this card's really interesting because you can put it on certain units and it it, it poses kind of the same uh, dilemma that things like Tarkin experience counters pose, mm. which is you turn a unit that's not usually a big threat into a big threat because it's harder to get rid of. If you put this on a Rugged Survivors, not only is it getting more power from its grit, it's drawing you more cards. Your opponent then has to toss up, hey, do I get rid of this card now? It's difficult because it's a 3-8. There's not a lot of things that can take that down. And in this in this situation, um, cards like Vanquish and Waylay really come into their own element, where before we didn't have a lot of mm. things that kind of boosted stuff. Now, as more upgrades come out, you kind of see that value of Vanquish and Waylay, where it says, I don't care what your stats are, I'm just getting rid of you. Waylay especially is a good one, because um, you can just bounce anything. Like uh, any any non leader unit, you could have five things on that unit, and it's gone. Yeah, and all those upgrades go to the discard pile. They're out of here. Mm, that's true. Yeah, they just get they just get gone. So um, it's really like re so each upgrade that kind of comes out and that kind of style of play, it really does yeah. show more the usefulness of those cards as well, which is really yeah. cool. It's 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 a, it adds a cool dynamic, which is I am which is good. I'm glad that that's what upgrades are doing. I'm, I think it would be a bit weird if they did like a weird stick around kind of thing. I think it's a cool dynamic to... I've always liked when you have a unit and you're able to put your opponent in a weird position by making that unit better. Yeah. Speaking of units, we have Recruit. Yes. Um, this is a, an event. It's a command event. Oh, another one. Shocker. <laughs> um, it costs one. It's very simple. Uh, look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal a unit. Put it into hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your deck in a random order. Uh, I've seen a few polarizing opinions on this card. Mm. 
and I'm gonna say this is a this is a good card. This is a just like I would put it at the same level of resilient in the decks that you're gonna run this in. This is good. Yeah, you're running this in decks where um, you're kind of looking for certain mm. cards to play. Yeah. So, um, like if you're if you're playing that um, green Tarkin. And you really want to get a um, Empress Star DJ yeah, or, or um, Emperor, Emperor's, Emperor's, Royal Guard. Emperor's Royal Guard out on yep. that turn three. Um, but if you have, if you don't have something to play on turn yeah. one, yeah, it's a good play to just kind of start getting you set up for that next turn. And yeah. even on later turns, it's good to just kind of find the pieces you need in the future too. When we see decks that are more heavily related to finding like a specific unit that the mm. whole deck is built around like if you have a deck where let's say that a vader unit comes out and is like super whack mm. uh, and you just build a deck around that unit yeah. of course you're going to want to run this card it's essentially three extra copies yeah, absolutely and it's one of those cases where it's like oh i i am late into the game i'm playing luke and I really need that Han Solo now to start clearing away board. Mm. I really need that on board of, like, this turn. I have eight energy. It's like, that's a really good... Yeah, you can obviously. search. You can dig for it. Uh, obviously, Recruit is a card you want to use earlier in the game because it's not a tutor. So there is a chance you won't hit the unit you're after. And for those of you saying, oh, what if you whiff? Um, that does come down to deck building. Obviously, I wouldn't include this card in a deck where I have a higher upgrade event ratio than I do units. Um, or even you have space you know, like you have... Um, no, it searches any unit, doesn't it? Yeah, it searches any unit. But Sorry, I, I, no. again, if, if I'm running a space deck, James and James is right, I'm probably going to choose Prepare for Takeoff over this. Absolutely. So it really is you weigh up your options where, again, I think, I think a lot of people just saw this card and dismissed it. Whereas... I think we got to really unpack it and look at it in the in the lens of the some cards are good in the decks you're building them for. This is a consistency bump. You're thinning yes. your deck, you're getting close to your pieces. Once you've assembled that piece, you win. And right now, that doesn't look like an achievable goal, but that is something that all card games have. Yes, absolutely. And it's it kind of in my mind it gets labeled under that thing where it's like it's not the card that's going to win you the game. But it's the card that's going to get you the cards you need to win to, the, to game. Win the game, yeah. ev like every like, like every time, e every game. Yeah, right. It's that. Con it's, it's as you said, the consistency. Yeah. That thing that just makes the deck run smoothly. And the thing is, it's not like you're not going to get value from it if you play the card top five and you don't see the exact unit you want. Your deck shouldn't be built to do that. You should have other units you want to yeah. grab, and you're not losing anything. You're paying a resource to thin your deck by one overall getting closer to your pieces and you're not losing any hand advantage you're probably getting a versatile unit the earlier you use this card the better in the late game when your deck is thinner if you have a specific card you need to get this card's great overall it's a pretty good card it's just about how you use it uh, in your deck yeah, exactly i think that's a very good summary of it big uh, big p big peasy admiral p admiral p big guy Mm. Uh, the only unit left that we hadn't seen in the starter decks now. Yeah, and uh, boy, what a unit! What a unit it is. It certainly is. So Amalpiet is a two-cost villain command one four, mm -hmm. and his ability says that when you play a card of six cost or more, I believe it is a yeah, command. It's it's each friendly. Uh, it's not command. It is it's not command. Each friendly unit with a cost of six or more. Has a ambush. Has an ambush, which, as we've stated, uh, stuff like Han Solo, um, very, very good keyword. Good ability. Um, stuff like um, the Relentless coming down with ambush, ATSD coming down with ambush, AT, with, AT coming yeah. down with ambush. Like, I, I do not want to be the guy who's sitting there being like, I'm in a good position, and my opponent goes, I have Piet. I go AT, ATST, pop your board, take your overwhelm damage in one move. Yeah. And it, it, like even worse against AT, AT, because in, in one foul swoop, that thing can probably like, get, that can two for one, because yep. you're dropping it, it's an eight eight, it's swinging, its ability can transfer damage over. So Piet is really good. And it's, it's interesting to see cards like this, mm. where Piet's fine, and by himself, he probably wouldn't look great.
Yeah. But every time we get a six cost card in Piet's general vicinity that he's that in a deck that can be run with Piet, he gets better. Yes, absolutely. And to me it is a card that demands removal. Yeah, if I see a Piet going down, um you you need to get rid of him before your opponent gets to that six cost area. Yeah. And de- de- depending on their deck, I mean, we don't know if there's any if there's going to be any future cost reducers or anything like that. Uh, you like Piet comes down, and if you don't want to have to face off against a, a power team with ambush, get rid of him. Yeah, absolutely. He's. Um, even if you're, it's a turn one play, it's not a turn one play you're going to be swinging into other units with. It's just going to sit there and you're going to say, cool, you're either going to swing into him and waste some swings, yeah. use some removal on him, yep. or he's going to just be a threat the entire time. Yeah, it's, uh, he's a really good Chekhov's gun situation where he's, he's there. as a Schrodinger's Piet. I think he will be good or he won't be good. His art's pretty goofy too. I've seen a lot of people hating on his art, but I don't know, I really like it. He's kind of sitting there and he looks like he's shaking his fist like an old man, but like, get off my lawn, rebels! Get out of here! He's like, he's like unleashing his ambush dogs to get you off his lawn. He's like, get out of here! I love it. I think it's really goofy. I think it's right. And also, the stat line that we've seen is the pretty same good. stat line as um, R2-D2, R2-D2, C3PO, yeah. which we know are annoying to remove. Man... I gotta say, I know it's the right play, but it still doesn't feel great to open fire a C-3PO. Yeah, and it's gonna feel the same with Pierre. It's like, I yeah. gotta remove him because he's gonna be a threat he's good. in two turns, but I gotta but make I gotta sure do, he's not I gotta here. do it now so two turns Reese doesn't look back and go, what, you, what, you idiot? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, suddenly uh, there's a... Um, <laughs> resupply and a yeah, and you're like, De- Death Star DJ and suddenly they're at six and you're like, oh, wait, uh... Shit. <laughs> uh, open fire, open fire they, now? Yeah, and then they put the big thing down anyway. It's, and, and it's go, too late. I think even even if you let Piet player play one card with ambush, they're satisfied. Even if you don't... I think the thing about Piet is even if you use removal or get rid of it, then it's just... It's it's good for them. They've used, that He's done his job of being kind yeah. of this target of, hey... You gotta use something. P. It's one of those really interesting cards, and we we already have a lot of them where they threaten because Piet himself isn't the problem. It's the threat of the unknown in your opponent's hand that is the problem. Yes, they could have nothing, but are you willing to take that chance? And that's a really interesting philosophy of cards because it's less so about the card design. And don't get me wrong, this card design is once again FFG really well designed I, I absolutely love every card yeah. we're seeing but um, it's that situation where your opponent could have nothing but the mental games you play in your opponent is a part of the competitive nature of card games yeah, absolutely. you need to be able to have the resources to psych your opponent out and force them to play in ways they usually wouldn't which gets you ahead um, speaking of interesting ways to play uh, I guess kind of the, the flip side of Piet is just like we had with Vigilance, uh, Fantasy Flight Games is letting us vote on some cards each week. So make sure you get your votes in. Go to their Twitter, go to their Instagram, go to their Facebook. Um, they do it everything. It's just really fun. Yeah. They release a video. Uh, and you get to have your say, which I think is really good. I love that yeah. they're reaching out to us. And we're always going to see the four cards, but yeah. it's nice to be able to have a little say on which ones we get to see yeah, first. It's, it's always nice when, a, when, when they... You know, when, when a card game company or, or when the people who run it, the team who runs... Um, uh, the sellers on limited side of things. You know, they're reaching out. They're involving the community. Community yeah. involvement is a great sign for the card game. Um, overall. So, um, go do that. Have a look. Next week one is coming up soon. We'll, I, I voted upgrade because I personally am really interested to see what a command upgrade is going to look like. Absolutely. By the time this video is out, it'll probably be very wrong. But, um, who knows? Uh, but In fact, this video will be coming out just before that card is released. True, yeah. Um, so, who knows? Let, let us know in the comments if we were right or wrong. You can make fun of me. Um, <laughs> but this week, we got a base. base. And another 25 health base, which is so interesting. And i got to say, we had our theories about this one. 
Mm. Uh, and we we were very surprised. No, we were de- in a we good had, way. We were definitely pretty sure that it would just be giving experience, experience counters. counters. That's yeah. what that was. I think our... many people. Yeah, I think I yeah. saw a few people kind of quite a bit quite theorizing a bit. that way. But no, they've done a. They've surprised us. Yeah. And they've said no. Nope, Piet is now a whole base. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> the reason we're following Piet up with this one is the base itself. So it's the energy conversion complex on Yadu, which is where they tested out the uh, prototype for the Death Star's laser energy uh, cannon. Um, it is a 25 health base, and its epic action is you may play a unit from your hand with a cost of six or less, paying its cost. It was clarified on the Twitter uh, by FFG, Star Wars Unlimited uh, social media person, that it is paying the cost. Yep. Um, which I know some people can get confused with because there are some certain cards that specify yeah, some, say some that don't. Some don't um, but... but you pay the cost, so it's a unit that's six or less, so the inverse of Piet, uh, and it gains ambush. Yep, so that's really just a, cool. any card, six or less, yep. ambush. And that can be really cool to see. So cool. And I think it's something that if you're in a bind... It's something that could be played turn yep. two. I think, honestly, um, you get your leader out. Play Rugged Survivors, give an ambush. Yeah. Get your draw immediately. Swing into a unit. Get the grid up on Rugged Survivors. It's actually a really good base in that instance because that card nets you immediate value of drawing a card, getting a higher body with grit, potentially clearing a unit... I think Solid. also a turn two play of um, Death Star DJ. Yeah, and get him in, swing immediately, remove putting a him unit, into get a resource. Into resource, yeah. it could be could see people yeah, using it that early, powerful, even yeah. though you can wait till there's that six cost. Yeah, something that just gets you that immediate value. Yeah, cannot be understated as something that anything that we get that's a five cost unit could be incredibly powerful depending on what they are. Overall, this is a really interesting base. And again, it opens up that line of conversation. Is the aggressive ambush unit worth the five health? Yes, absolutely. And that is a question that you're going to be asking yourself, not just now, but every single time you build... Yeah. You, every single time you're playing a, a card and you want, I want a green base. Well, do I run this? Let's see. Do, do, I, like, do I have something that, has a, that, yeah. that can be really benefit from this ambush? No. Okay, maybe I'll go the third health. Yes. Well, now there's a toss-up. And in the future, we could see cards that synergize really, really well with Ambush. Yeah. For instance, we could get cards with... Uh, for instance, if you have a card that your opponent has that's a pesky card you want to remove, but it's got a shield on it, play a Saboteur that has Ambush. Yeah. Swings in, removes the shield, kills it. You could definitely be play, playing... Uh, gr- uh, play rogue Operative. Yeah, you could yeah. play your Rogue, 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 rogue Operative. Rogue and be... And, and swing into something, full damage, full, removing the yeah, shield. removing the shield. Definitely a strong play. Yeah, I think it's it opens up some really interesting lines of play, just like the shield discussion does. That um, are really worth looking at. I think it's 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 really, it's a really cool base. And just like Scarif, anything that creates conversation and anything that makes you go, should I run this? Is an interesting and well designed. Yeah, card. absolutely. It's not overpowered, but it 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 definitely has its uses. Um, speaking of having its uses, uh, we had another card come out that I'm really interested in. It's been polarizing for a few people based on its aspect, actually. Mm. Um, this is a two cost. This is Admiral Yalaran. It's your boy. Uh, good old Clone Wars veteran. Yeah. Uh, fought with Anakin Skywalker. Uh, he turned to the Imperial Security Bureau, which is pretty much just like the Imperial CIA, secret police, military police, if you will. Um, so he's a 2 cost 2 3 command, but not a villain. Still an Imperial, still an official. He has both of those tags, but he's not a villain, which is interesting. Uh, and his effect is very, very fun. His effect is he, um, whenever you play a command card, you gain one life two base including two base. him you play when uh, whenever you can play a command unit sorry uh you get to to, to, add, to heal one of your base it's really really cool yeah so even just playing him himself heals your base one gives you a two three body on board yep 
In a deck that runs a lot of Sentinels, I can see this being a really good card because he's less... He, he'd be less of a threat to be attacked and more of a card that's like, you play him, you're playing your Sentinels, you're building up that life. He's still an Imperial, so he benefits from things like Tarkin, mm -hmm. uh, both the Leader and the Searcher. General Veers. General Veers, he, he gets a plus one, plus one. Um, and I think a lot of people are very curious because they're like, well, he's an Imperial, shouldn't he be a villain? Uh, really depends on the character. I mean, things like Lando, I would consider, you know, he fights for the Rebellion in uh, the during the Battle of Endor to defeat the second Death Star. But the movie before that, he, he sells out Han Solo and yeah. gets him put in Carbonite. So characters, you know, just like Star Wars, everything's kind of three-dimensional. There's a lot going yeah. on. Admiral Yularen is an Imperial, but he values peace above all. Um, and he, he just believes that the Empire's rigid structure is the best way to give that peace. He's not necessarily a bad guy. I mean, he fought in the Clone Wars. I, th I think another thing is just that idea of we've seen him on the good side and we've seen, seen him, him on, on the, the bad, bad side. side. Yeah. Neutral. Yeah, um, it can be that simple. Yeah. So it's really cool. I, I, I would say it actually is cooler that this happens because yes. then we know that we're going to get cards and characters that are splashable into other decks. Um, like, I can run Yularen and Leia. He's not a rebel, but if I'm running a, a deck that's heavy on command units, that's a good piece to have. Especially when Leia is trying to play a lot of command units yeah. to fill up that board. He is something that can, yeah. if left alone, kind of similar, uh, similar to Piet in that kind of thing of like, he's dangerous to be left alone, not necessarily as a threat, but as just a... More, you just get more value out of him mm. the longer he stays on board. You yeah, know, I, I, I think he's, I think he's an interesting, cool card, and I really can't wait to build some decks around him when mm. we get some more command units. I think I'm, re and I'm a big fan of Admiral Wolf Yular, and I think whenever I, I hear his voice at the beginning of like a Clone Wars episode when I was a kid, and when I watch it now, it's just always, it's always very fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, speaking of good Star Wars, um. We got a, a cool reveal today. Yeah. Our community reveal as well, um, which is which is really nice. Um, so, uh, it's a death trooper. Absolutely. Uh, this is a three cost vigilance villain, three three. With on play, deal two damage to an allied unit, and deal two damage to an enemy unit. And what does Krennic say, everybody? Damaged yeah. units you control get plus one, plus one? It is a very interesting card. It does it very well with yeah. Krennic, which we expected. Which yeah, yeah, of course, for. of course. I mean, they were introduced to protect Krennic. Works works with him. They're like... It just... It, it makes sense. It fits. Yeah, it makes sense. And it's good that it fits. because And we know FFG has been caring about that kind of thematics. thematics. Yeah. I mean, I, I hopefully, fingers crossed, we get some shore troopers as well from Scarif. Mm. That'd be sweet. I mean, it'd be cool to be able to build your two Rogue One decks, have like a Cassian Andor. Yeah, and I think with the recruit, against. they had all th the Death Trooper, the Storm Trooper, trooper and, and the, the Shore yeah. Trooper on it. So uh, I think we might the be Death Trooper the... artwork has Shore Troopers in the background too. Mm. Also, the artwork, just a quick shout out to that, looks mm. awesome. Uh, whoa. <laughs> um, again, we've, we've talked about it already. And I don't want people to underrate this card. Rugged Survivors. Yeah, absolutely. We talk about Rugged Survivors a lot, but it's the only blue. Uh, it's the only real grit card that we have apart from yeah, Chewy. Chewy. I think just grit in general, that Works keyword really is going to well work really this. well. Yeah. And I think we're probably going to get another villain, uh, vigilance. I think we'll see grit. a few grit yeah. villains. Because that kind of seems where they're going, like damaging other things, uh, like their friends to get themselves ahead, yeah, ahead. that kind of deal. But that, that's like the, <laughs> the don't, don't choke on your aspirations, director. <laughs> um, the, that's the kind of the whole deal, right? Like, it's, it's re And it's really interesting to see. I play my Death Trooper. I ping this unit for two. I ping this unit for two. Depending on the colors I'm running, I might have some early force units. It binds all things. Yeah. Right? You can heal that unit back up for two. And then if you control a force unit, who knows? We could get some low-cost invaders or Palpatines or, or anything. We, you know, who knows? In the future, we might get some low-cost inquisitors. You run them in your deck. Boom. Suddenly, your death troop is pinging something for two, pinging your unit for two. You, it binds all things and dealing another two, healing that unit. Another three, even. Yeah. That, and, and, that's, and that's cool stuff. Yeah. And, and it synergizes with Krennic. But I also think we might see some ping decks. Um 
which essentially means throwing damage around by effects. Um, uh, so this card would slot into that, you know, uh, similar to Vader's ability, things like that. Overall, it's a really interesting card. One thing to note, it is not a May. Mm. So it comes in, if he is your only unit, you have to hit him for two. Even if your opponent doesn't have a unit, there's no valid targets on their end, but he sees himself. He's like, oh, for the Empire! Pew! <laughs> ah, my foot! <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> It is cool, though, that he can hit himself. Yeah. So in a vacuum where you don't have cards, you need to get rid of this. It's got two health left. You can chuck him down. Yeah. He'll two damage to himself. If you're running credit, he then becomes a, a four-one. Four one. Four one. And good. you've killed the unit that yeah. you need to kill. I think that is really, can be really useful. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, for one, really like it. I, mm. I love the art of this card. I think when I first saw this card, I was a little bit hesitant because I was like expecting a payoff. But then I realized, and we, we talked about this just before, it isn't a payoff, it's an enabler to your payoffs. It's a, mm. it, it, it enables your payoff of Grit. It enables your payoff of Krennic. It enables your payoff of if we see cards in the set in the future that thrive on when you deal damage, do this. Yeah. Death Troop is a payoff. Why would you not run him if he does that? I think, I think one of the things that I was talking about before is if you've watched our previous gameplay videos, you know I... You know, I really like that start of Moddy into Snowtrooper Lieutenant yep. to swing with Moddy with plus two. He trades and then ready the Snowtrooper mm. Lieutenant. Now we can be doing that with this Death Star, with this um, Death Trooper, yeah. where you play Moddy turn one it, against any deck, but Vader pretty much. There's no way for them to remove it with just the two energy. Then you next turn you. Um, Play that Death Trooper, deal two damage to Modi, two damage to an opponent, and then ready that Death Trooper up. In an aggressive playstyle, it's really good because if they don't have a Sentinel on board and they just have a two, well, let's say they got a Viper Droid, right? Three, two. Um, and you go Modi at base. Cool, okay, sweet. And they swing their Viper Droid at your base. You can just Death Trooper pop your Modi, kill their thing, and then you've got four damage to their base. It's a pretty aggressive start. Um, or you can just drop the Death Trooper and still get that three damage to base. Again, pretty pretty solid, pretty aggressive yeah. aggressive start going on. Um, overall, this card is a really good play extender and play enabler. Yeah, absolutely. And especially if we get start to get cards that say when damaged do this, when when like dealt damage do this. I'd really that, like to Ed see B. a card in villain that if it's dealt damage, you get to draw a card maybe like once per turn or something similar or something interesting like that just a just a cool effect that's like if this card gets damaged by your effect value yeah and i think that that also helps to alleviate some of that pressure that kind of vader puts on and being able to just slowly ping units down if we get effects yeah. like that it can kind of disincentivize that kind of ping damage yeah. that kind of goes around and is really oppressive at the moment Those... not oppressive but like it's, oh, it's it, very strong vader moment. vader in this current card pool is very strong so it'd be interesting to see how he evolves and where he goes with his hmm. decks for, for all we know we could see a blue blue red ping deck um but we we that, that's all the reveals for this week uh that we have as of time of recording i'm sure there'll probably be another card right after we finish this video just get in like something. three hours yeah it'll be like, oh by the way there's also this card oh not again not again <laughs> unfortunately we have to record at some point and there's always going to be a reveal yeah. a few hours after we finish recording. Yeah, I mean, if if you see a weird jump cut, we'll probably explain that we, we, we I rushed over and we recorded a reveal, but uh, we, we'll always cover them, so don't you worry. Um, but we talked a lot about cards just then, what makes them good. We talked a lot about cards popping up and us going, this is a good card, this is a great card. Uh, and we thought with a week off of the live streams, we would explain what makes a card good one well, what like what yeah. how do we determine what a good card is and this is this is especially for new players but i'm sure a lot of you all look a card game veterans like us could agree or, or learn some things or, or just even uh have a discussion with us based on our opinions and takes of the yeah cards. i think one of the things is while you like you come in here and you watch this and you see us talk about cards say this card's good this card's okay this card's re absolutely incredible yeah but it's hard, like sometimes it's hard to tell why that's the case. Yeah. And me and Reese do have different ways of kind of coming to that conclusion. Yeah. I think. Definitely. And um, as we've kind of talked about this, we've realised that there are 
a lot of different ways of seeing how a mm. card is good in different environments. And that's yeah. really important to get that full um, image. I think the, the biggest thing we agree on, though, is what determines a card can really be easily summed up in a few smaller categories and one big way. Mm. Balance. Balance between a card's abilities and its stats. See, I, I personally, I value abilities quite a lot and James values stats. And I think it's a good thing that we both have that perspective. We can share it. And at the end of the day, we come together and we form that opinion of this card is good because it's balanced. And I don't think there's been a time yet where we have particularly disagreed on a card being shown. Uh, I think usually we come to the same conclusion and say, this card is good because of these reasons. This card is okay because of these reasons. And this, as of right now, one card is not good. <laughs> we will talk about that card. Um, but uh, to break it up into smaller things, um, I think it's, it's stats of the card, mm -hmm. the consistency of the card, which can kind of be shared between the next option and the first option, and the value that the card brings you as the player. Mm, absolutely. Um, starting off with stats, it's... Um it's easy and it's hard to kind of describe stats and what's happening with them yeah. in the game, right? It's easy in the way we can say really blanket statements. A lot of the time, the term one cost for two kind of stat points is thrown yeah. out there, meaning a kind of like if it's a two cost, it'll have two attack and two health or one attack and three health, but yeah. four stat points in, in total. total. And that is kind of seen throughout the whole thing. Mm. Um the issue with this is that when abilities come into play, it yeah, messes with that around. So it's really hard things. to use that as a hard and fast ruler. This is a, a better because it's higher and this is worse because it's lower. One thing to keep in mind, and we're not going to go into it too much in this video. Um, we probably will talk about it later on when we get more to meta stuff. Mm. Um, you've, if you've played card games before or you've been doing research, you've probably heard things like, the word, the word like curve or cost to stat ratio. Um, what that essentially means is a curve just determines the cost of your cards in your deck when you're building the deck and where it spikes and where it declines. And the same can be said about the average uh, stat cost in the game because the games do follow, uh, much like most games, like if you, if you actually look into games like Magic or Arcana, um, things like that, uh, you will notice that cards adhere to a pretty rigid average. Yeah. Uh, and there are cards that can break the rules, but a lot of the time those cards will break the rules because of either their effect or mm. the lack thereof. A lot of the time when a card is severe, like breaks those rules, it's because it has a negative attached to it. Yeah. For instance, um, if you were to have a look at something like um, Entrenched, where giving three three is mm. a very high, very it's good. like oh my For god two? wow that like you're getting yeah. so many stats then there's it's like oh yeah. right I can't attack base attack, attack attack a base um, so usually you get that negative effect tacked on which is kind of what brings it back and entrench is a great card um, because of a number of reasons um, but to give a good example of cards that are good I think we will look at. Consular Security Force, which is a three cost uh, four seven, and Boba Fett, the unit and the leader unit side. Um, Consular Security Force is a th is a four seven for three four cost for four cost four seven for four. He has no ability. No, so it's like its stats would usually you would expect four four. It's got a three, like it's got three extra stat points, which makes it pretty, very decent yeah, for right. its cost. It is a big body for its cost. Yeah. And what you can look at and say that's really, that's really good. There is that downside of where it doesn't have any sort of ability to give mm. you more value other than just those stats. The the interesting thing about cards like this is, yes, there is a stat to cost ratio. Yes, it is important to consider the curve and power of, a, of cards but a lot of the time as well abilities do factor into that pretty heavily mm. um, and vice versa um, so 
if someone plays down the Boba Fett unit versus a, a rebel, uh, a console security force, I'm probably going to be more scared of the Boba Fett unit just because of the threat of what he can do. Whereas I know that I can probably deal with the rebel. I can. De- I think the difference between the two is how how easy it is to deal with. Uh, the card based on its effect and its consistency of its effect, which is what we mentioned before. Consistency on a card is incredibly good. Um, and a console security force is fine. Yeah, console security force sometimes will come down and your opponent doesn't have a way to yeah. remove it and gets you a lot of value because it, it's got a big health, it's got a big back end, and so it can just kind of swing into a bunch of things and take them yeah. out. And if they don't have a way to deal with it, then that's going to get you a lot of value. It is possible to get a lot of value. But if they do have some way to ping it for more damage, or mm. they just have something bigger that they can just play down yeah. and take care of it, then so the issue with it is not that it can't get you any value. It's that cons- it can- it, it's probably not getting you value, value consistently. consistently. And... This is where we should talk about the Boba Fett unit. Mm. Boba Fett, oh, his his ability is good. Yes, it can net it can potentially net you value every turn, and more often than not, I would say it's getting you value. And his stat line is above average. Yeah, so the Boba Fett unit also has that kind of bigger back end, mm. but um, that really ties into his ability being able to Pinging. live a little bit of yeah. damage and yeah. live a little bit of that removal and being able to get that ability off a lot more consistently mm. and that that is kind of in my mind what makes it that kind of better better card better unit yeah. obviously we're looking at like a common versus a legendary, legendary yeah. which are usually going to have yeah, a little of bit course. of disparity of course um, but looking at that card a good way to sum it up is Boba Fett's value, uh, as I said earlier, what does Boba Fett do for you as the player playing that card? Mm. He is board control. Boba Fett is a good card because he synergizes with the deck you want to play. If he's not synergizing with your deck, then he's a three cost that's overstatted, which is powerful, with an ability that's consistently going to give you board control, which warps the game in your favor. Mm. A strong or good card has the ability to change the course of the game based on its playing. For instance, a card like Relentless, it's a nine cost, it's got a good body, but the reason that it is a good card, because it's it's cost and it's its stat its body averages out from what we know. It's an eight eight, but it's a space unit, so it's naturally going to be a little bit weaker than yeah. uh, a ground unit. So it actually fits the cost. But it's, and also it generally as you get higher in it, the in stat kind cost, of flattens the out. Stat kinda, the stats yeah. do drop off a little bit, and that's normal. Yeah, you don't want to be playing a nine cost ten ten in the in space because even on the ground they're not going to release yeah. cards like that because those bigger bodies are just too much to deal with. A There's lot of that time. that's a lot, and that's and that that's where it comes in this delicacy of balance, right? You got to make sure that you're bringing out a card that's balanced, a card that's designed well. And honestly, right now I have full faith in FFG. Oh, I yeah. say that right now. We said that last episode. I say it again right here. From everything I'm seeing, from every time we get a new card. Faith. That's what I've got in this game. The design process is really good. The team's nailing it. But back to the Relentless. Its ability warps the game in your favor. Yeah, absolutely. You get to use your events. But you make your opponent jump through hoops to use theirs. Spending resources, expending your opponent's resources is huge. Yeah, and I think it's um, looking at the relentless versus something like home one where they're kind of they're similar kind of bomb late game ships. Yeah, but they do um, different things. Do very different things. And it's looking at home one when you think of I play home one. Okay, I play Vanquish and kill it. Mm. It's like wow, that's that's rough. But Relentless kind of gets around that, which yeah. is why, Can't why, why on an which is one of the reasons why it's like you look at it and you go, "Oh, that's really good," because once it's down, it is really hard to get rid of it. And I, I and Home One is also a really good card. Yeah, yeah Home One, let's go. Um, but <laughs> um, um, Home One is a really good card in the sense of that when you play it. It's a payoff to going wide. So, again, another 
another card, it warps the game in your favor because it's paying off what your deck mm. is meant to do. Again, a lot of the time with cards, another factor is um, context in which they're being played, which deck they're in, what meta they're in. But overall, a good card is usually a consistent effective mm. value. Layer. Yeah, so layer is coming down, especially late game. A starter deck layer for, for just quickly. The card will be up here so that we yeah, yeah. will be able to Whoa. see it. <laughs> um, yeah, so she, she's, uh, the later the game goes, the but more she value gets. she has because yeah. she's tapping down things that are way over her cost and stopping them from attacking. For the nice, time. Vader! <laughs> yeah. Sleepy time. So it's negating not only an attack, but a lot of times an additional effect happening on attack mm. that you're stopping for the turn. And then you can maybe get some removal lane afterwards next turn. But essentially, it's as a two cost, she is going above, like being able to stop above her cost. Yeah. And being able to bring you value. By not spending all, like, you don't not have to spend all your resources to kind of stall out your opponent. You're kind of just using some of them, then you can use more to kind of put stuff on the board and threaten that from yeah. then on. And she can stop things like Relentless. She can stop things like Vader. Um, and I'm sure later on in, in decks that want to go wide, she may also be really good because she untaps your resource. She can be a body that comes down that untaps to extend your plays. Things like that are really, really good. Yeah. Han Solo is a good card because. He has an immediate effect. He's an, he comes down, he untaps, and he attacks straight away. That in of itself is really strong. Piet, for example, letting your cards do that is a really good effect. The fact that he doesn't take damage back if he, if, yeah. if he kills the unit is even better. And, and although he's a 7 cost 6-6, six, six, you know, probably thinking, oh, the stats, you know, they're not technically adding up. That's what we mean when we say he is a card that has consistent value. If you're playing Han Solo, I would be bewildered if you didn't have the point where... I would be bewildered if you're playing Han Solo and you don't have anything to kill with him. If you are, you probably already won. Um, but he will warp the game for you. He comes down, he kills something, and then if he didn't die because of it, he has no damage on him, force your opponent to remove him... Han Solo can potentially get a two for one out before your opponent can really even blink. Mm, absolutely. Um, now we talk about stats a lot. Yeah. We're going to move on to kind of abilities and kind of event cards and stuff yeah. like that and how we kind of determine what a good ability is mm. um, and what something that maybe can be not, not, not as impactful. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at a card like event wise asteroid sanctuary yeah we know that tapping a unit down is powerful we know from layer that to being able to do it as a two cost is strong and we know that shields are good so having both of them on a car on the same card it, you're immediately kind of going on um that thing we we're talking about where you're warping the game state yeah right in your it changes a lot of the board state it makes whereas if you hadn't have played it you better played a unit or something they could have swung a unit into one of your units killing yeah. it and with overwhelm dealing damage to your yeah. base but now suddenly it their unit can't attack because it's tapped and your unit has a shield on it yeah i've got my cell block guard and you've got your vader i know you're going to attack me i don't want that to happen right now i've got to buy myself some time Boom. Asteroid Sanctuary. Vader's tapped. Cell Block Guard has a shield on him. That means if you want to swing at him next turn, you don't get the luxury of Vader's ping somewhere else. You're forced to use it on him to get the shield off. You don't get the Vader swing this turn, which buys me time to get other cards to deal with that Vader. Asteroid Sanctuary is solid, especially at its cost. Again, if it was a higher cost, like at a three cost, it'd probably still be okay uh, I'd say the three cards would probably still be good. But anything higher than that, like four or five, it's, mm. it's one of those things where it's a bit tougher to determine because, again, the intrinsic value of a card for its cost is also what makes it good. So paying two for a card that can warp the game format in your favour is great. Paying three for it's great. But paying four is expending quite a lot of resources, especially in a game like this where yeah. you really want to be getting two cards 
really per turn a lot of the time. Especially when you're getting up to the higher cost, you want to be able, yeah. like when you're playing things that are essentially a control environment where you're trying to control your opponent's board state, you want to be doing it to multiple units at that point. Yeah. Right. Earlier with the lower cost, it's fine to just be like that one unit and is, is, we're going to deal with that. But once you get to higher, you kind of expect to be able to deal with multiple units. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a five cost tap two or three units mm. kind of kind of deal later on where with those higher costs then you can deal with a little bit more kind of thing speaking of five cost good cards are absolutely <laughs> screw the game um <laughs> is, is exactly what i'm talking about being able to deal with yeah. multiple units uh overwhelming barrage absolutely and this card is Pew, 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 yeah, pew, game pew, warping, pew, pew, pew. as we said, it's one of those games where you can just look at it and say this card is really good. Yeah. Because when we saw it, we were like, "Wow!" Yeah. Um, board all wipe. you need is a unit on the board, which is actually surprisingly like quite easy to yeah. do. I mean, in, it's the whole point game. of the game. <laughs> like, it's one of those things where because you can't attack straight away, there is limited options. So just having a body on the board is usually quite easy to do. Mm. And this just it, even on small bodies. It's, this it game feels good. Feels feels, good. Th this card feels, feels good. good. I, th I think the card's really interesting because it plays out at a really interesting point in the game where it is appropriately costed. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's interesting because it's appropriately costed and at the time you would play it for its cost, it's really good. Yeah, it's a card that feels good to get played tapping all of your mana on turn four. Yeah, and that's and, and when that when that feels good, you know the card is, um, very, really quite good yeah. because it it shows you that you're getting quite a lot of value from it. You Absolutely. can easily kill, especially if they have a lot of small units. Two I've, or three. Units. I've seen this. I've seen this card like five for one. Yeah, it's especially late game, especially if you're playing against a deck that's really low to the ground, a lot of yeah. small units, a lot a lot of um. Stormtroopers. Yeah. Well, oh, not to the troopers. <laughs> a lot of um, stormtroopers and viper probe droids. No, and and my boys. Just... My boys. <laughs> um, one thing cool about the card too is, is uh, again, I personally don't think this card is overpowered because there is obviously still, you know, they have to have a unit. In some instances, they might not be able to clear your whole board and things like that. But the card is great. It is a really good card. It also gives a unit plus two, plus two for turn. That could close yeah. out a game. Yeah, that and that and that's easily um, like just an extra bonus on top of an already great card. Um, it's one more point of oh, and then I'll swing this into this and remove that as well. And just then that final like point. Get of, him, get him good. Just say <laughs> yeah, um, and it's just isn't it just pointedly lovely that it's on a, an imperial card? <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's that's one thing that like we kind of. That's, that's a few things that make up good cards. Another card to look at, um, that's a good one to discuss before we move on to cards that maybe don't benefit you in terms of design. We mentioned it earlier, is Entrench. Mm. But Entrenched is good for a different reason. Sometimes, in especially in card games, if you're newer, trust me, you're going to see this probably quite a bit. Not a whole bunch, but... It is something that you'll see. Um, design versus... Uh, so, intention versus execution. Mm. Entrench is a good card. It's a two cost that buffs a unit by plus three, plus three, and they can't attack a base. Used on your units, that's pretty good. Yeah. Buff your Sentinels, buff your Chewy, start clearing their board. That was the in That's the intent of the card. Yeah. The execution of the card currently, Entrenched is one of the best removal pieces in the game. Yeah, especially if you're avoiding a lane, um, either you're playing space race or you're playing ground. just a mono ground Marathon. kind of. <laughs> the runny boys. Um, and like focusing on ground more. Um, you've seen it in one of our gameplay videos. Yeah, uh, the um, blue blue chewy um, versus the, Luke. The versus Luke. I went a bit hard on the space race side of things. It kind of panned out that way. And I played a few entrenches on the ground units, effectively meaning they could do nothing. Yeah. If they don't anything. have a unit to swing into, they just can't attack. They just chill so out. So Luke can't give a shield or anything. Yoda can't restore to. It's it's just a really powerful ability to be like, I'm not using that land anyway, and now you can't eat. They, this character yeah. is just not going to be usable. Yeah. Vader can ping you when he attacks. Good thing he can't attack. 
Whoa, you get to untap two with Boba? Damn. <laughs> Trench warfare. No, it's absolutely a really interesting thing, especially coming from a game design perspective. In a lot of time, um, I've had some experience in designing my own games and stuff like that. Um, when you're coming at it from a design perspective, you're kind of this is how the card is meant to be run. So we're testing it lots in this. But when you come when when you kind of give it to players and they can kind of run wild with it. It's or they're always going to come up with things that you never really expected them to happen. And, and be like, oh, do. right, yeah. We do run wild, don't we, gang? <laughs> we get a card and our filthy little mitts, and we're just like, how can I break this? Another thing I like to, to, uh, to talk about in this kind of context is um, kind of why we've talked last uh, week, we kind of talked about the difference between vigilance and command. Yeah. And I think this is really big on. Like, you might be like, oh, why were they saying that command is better than vigilance? They kind of seem similar to me. Yeah. And I think it comes down to that aspect of changing the board. Yeah. And I and, and, and in, at the end of the day, uh, like, yeah, you can kill something and give something a shield. They're, like, That's but it, with vigilance, but it's not consistent. It's you can, the shield is consistent, but the killing thing. Oh, they don't quite have. They have four health, um, and, and the, so it becomes a little bit less consistent. And the mill currently as well. It's it's not, it's not. Unfortunately, right now, I know for all you mill fans out there, <laughs> uh, it's just not. It's not currently consistent. When we get a mill deck, I'm sure this card's gonna be absolute bomb. But right now, when we compare the two cards, and vigilance is by no means a bad card. I think it's a very good card when you're running mono blue, but there's a lot of things to consider when doing that. Inversely, command ev all four of its effects have the chance to warp the game in your favor. Yeah. Getting an extra resource, get your leader out earlier, uh, dealing damage to a unit, removing a piece on the board, giving experience counters. Man, my Vader just got bigger. Getting a card back from your discard pile, getting a unit back from your discard pile. Oh yeah, sorry. Just a quick clarification. We didn't say any card last episode. We're so wrong. Yeah. It's just unit. Unit only. Still really good. Still really good. Get a unit back that they defeated earlier. Man, I'm in a, I'm in a position where I really need to start, like where I really need this to not go badly. I have one Sentinel on the board. It'd be really good if I had two. Buff my Sentinel, get my other one. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool... It's a situation where... Um, can, like command is benefiting you more, much more consistently, and therefore that's why in our eyes it we've better. kind of put it. We, we 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 did put it above command last week, like above vigilance last week. Sorry, being like it is, it does seem like the better card just because it has that. No matter what two options you pick, it's good. It's going to advance you. You're, you're, you're doing it's, really. It's going to well. advance you. Yeah. Speaking of advancing. Which sounds similar to ambition. Okay, we haven't talked about this card for yet. For a reason. For a reason. But um, we're gonna... Yeah. Okay. Like ambition. Before we start, this whole video is just our opinions. Uh, we've got a lot of card gaming experience. <laughs> uh, but this is just how we look at things. This video is just our opinion. And in the current card pool, maybe a card will get released that makes this card absolutely awesome. Everyone's expecting one. But in the current card pool... Galactic Ambition is not great. For those of you who don't know, you probably don't, it's a 7 cost villain event. Uh, you may play any non-hero unit for free, and your base takes damage equal to its cost. It is a 7 cost. Uh, it is a 7 so cost. So by free, you pay 7. So you dodge the aspect cost, but a lot of the time the aspects would be cheaper, from from what we've seen, uh, there's nothing to play with it. And the only thing that you can kind of get away like is like people saying you might be able to play the relentless for two less, eh. and then you then you're taking nine damage to your base. I would rather base. wait two turns than take nine damage. Um, it's just a card that doesn't have a place at the moment, and it, ne it like so it's, a, so it's like a card that you kind of look up and you're like, what? Uh, Why we assume something this? is going to come out that's going to make it. Playable, semi playable, but the interesting thing about cards like this, and the main reason we're talking about it, is because paying seven, which is an investment. Mm. Look at our other seven cost card, Han Solo. Yeah. So if you're paying seven, 
for this, and you can't even play Han Solo with this card, because he's a hero unit. So, you can play this card, and yeah, you're paying seven, okay? So it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment. Whereas you could get two units out, you're playing, paying seven to use this and another card in your hand. So you're losing two cards in hand and p potentially furthering your board state by one unit versus playing two units and furthering your board state by potentially more. And you're taking damage to your base. This card makes you pay a cost twice. And, and, and currently, there is no card worth doing that. No. And it, whatever card they, and if they do, like, you got to assume that it's planned for something in particular. Yeah. You got to assume that it, and like, it's got to be something specifically designed for this card. Something like when you play it, you heal it for its cost. You heal your base for the cost and just yeah. negate it anyway. And then it becomes like, it has to be something, it has to be something super powerful. And again, even if something super powerful does come out, I'm sure you guys ask yourself, well, then does it make the Galactic Ambition good? It's not. If there's no way to make it consistent, then no. Mm. It's because you've got this, you've got these six cards in your 50-card deck. And if you are unable to pull it off for whatever reason, then no. You, you, you just wasted six cards in your deck. Um, that is to, of course, say if that's the only, if if it's only Galactic Ambition and another card that can be played with it. I'm sure there'll be other stuff, but currently, its design, its design hints at something to come, and without the context of what that card is, it's difficult to say whether or not this card is good. And in the current circumstances, it is not a good card. Having said that, though, anything that is free play, Home 1, for instance, You're My Only Hope, and and this, c generally, free play is a very dangerous kind of thing, and you find a lot of the time when bans come out for cards and card games, it's, usually something it's free. a lot of the time something that's saying, play something for free, because it can be game breaking. Getting something free is the best kind of warping something in your way. But again, that that's where this card comes in. It's not really free, is it? Yeah, you're paying the seven. Freedom isn't free, not for folks like you and me. So I think in the future this card could have a place and pretend. And I, but I, I worry that for this card to be good, the thing you have to play is going to be have to be so good mm. that it's almost going to be too powerful already. Just yeah, and another another thing is as the that we just we discussed earlier is cards are good when they synergize with other cards, um, and synergize is the key word there. So if I play a card and it has effects that work with a mm. plethora of cards, it's good. Like a lot of it, when it works with a lot of other cards, it's good. If I have Galactic Ambition and it only works with one other card, essentially the prerequisite to making this card good, that's that's tough. Yeah. Cards that only work with one other card in your deck without any way to kind of search them out is a generally an inconsistent way of winning. And it's usually not... A, and consistent yeah. is usually key. As we've talked about with a lot of these cards, and just in general, when you see cards, when you're looking at them, what you need to be looking for is that kind of ability to warp the game consistently. And when you find that in a card... Find that in a leader, find that in an event, something that can change, warp the game in your favour mm. consistently. It's huge. That's when you can That's say, this is a good card. This is a good card. Um, yeah, I think that pretty well sums everything up we wanted to talk about. Before we do go, Resilient is a two out of five on the Spiceometer. Recruit. Couldn't just do it while we were talking about it. You have to uh, wait to the end. I forgot. It's a uh, uh, recruiter. That's because the spice on what uh, is uh, terrible and we shouldn't use it. Everyone's allowed to their opinion even if they're wrong. The recruit is a 2 out of 5. Admiral Piet is a 4 out of 5. The base is a 3 out of 5. The death trooper is a 3 out of 5. And Admiral Yularen, optimistically for me, is a 3.5 out of 5 on the spy summoner. Um, oh, yeah. That's all, folks. Thank you very much for Thank watching. You.
We Please will see subscribe. You next week. We'll see you next episode. For the Booster Pack live stream. Mm. Also, check out the gameplay. Yeah, no, uh, check that out.